Hey, what's up guys? Nelson here with Life on the Dirt Circuit. So this is going to be a little different video today. We are going to talk about the hottest topic in golf right now, the PGA Tour versus the Live Tour. Um, I've done a lot of research on this. There's been a lot of noise in the media, good and bad. And so um, what I'm going to do is share with you a few things you may not know about the Live Tour and tell you why 100% in my mind, it is going to be successful, right? So from a business standpoint, uh, there are two reasons why businesses don't succeed, two main reasons, lack of money, lack of knowledge. Uh, they don't suffer from either one of those. And so we're going to talk about that. But let's go back to how this all started, if you're unfamiliar. So there was a rumor that a rival tour was going to be started. And Greg Norman was the CEO of the company called Live Golf. And um, Jay Monahan, when there were rumors of, you know, a lot of big name players going to jump ship, then they said, no, we're going to be loyal to the PGA Tour. He had a players meeting and he told all of them, if you want to go, there's the door, essentially calling their bluff, right? Well, that backfired and it backfired big time. And so a lot of people don't think Live Golf will be here to stay and it 100% will be. And I'm going to start with the knowledge piece because when you look at any company or any organization, you got to look at the people that are running it, right? So, you know, Greg Norman's the CEO and that's where most people stop with their knowledge of the organization of Live Golf. So um, he's done a lot for the game of golf. He's also been very successful in the business world. Two great things to have when you're uh, in a startup company. But the team behind him is what you guys may not know about. So I've, I've got my computer in front of me here. So if you see me looking down, I'm just reading. So I'm going to read a couple of these names and backgrounds of the team that's supporting Live Golf. So um, Atul Kasla, hope I pronounced that right. He is their chief operating officer. Let's look at his background. So he was the brand officer for the NFL's Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they won the Super Bowl when Tom Brady was there. Uh, so he's held different positions in marketing, event production, and game day entertainment. Uh, that was kind of his specialty there with Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not a lightweight. You look at Ron Cross, their chief events officer. This is crazy. So he actually held a role on the PGA Tour before then working for Augusta National Golf Club. You don't think he has experience of running events from, um, I mean, the Masters to on the PGA Tour. Look at this. He ran events including the President's Cup. That's where the team aspect will come into play. Tour championship. Uh, and just had a, a wide breadth of experience when it comes to the game of golf. Will Steger. I think I pronounced that right. He worked for ESPN, Endeavor, WWE, Dick Clark Productions, Carrie Taylor, their chief marketing officer. She was single-handedly given credit for the entire rebranding of MTV. So all that to say, like, these are some heavy hitters that are supporting Live Golf and helping, you know, get this company off the ground. So the argument to that, uh, to Live Golf, is that this is not good for the game of golf. That's argument number one. It is 100% good for the game of golf. Uh, so that's the first of the four reasons um, that this is good for the game of golf and why they're going to succeed is the team and the knowledge they have behind them. So golf has been in the media now just dominating it over the last few weeks. Been on ESPN, uh, a lot of different analysts, Fox News, NBC talking about this. Well, people love drama. So now there's drama around the game of golf. People are paying attention to it. It's a new format, and it's going to grow the game of golf. So I think that's fantastic. So they have the knowledge. They have the team in place to make this grow. Secondly, number two is money. They have endless pocketbooks to make this work because the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia, PIV for short, that is, um, I'm sorry, PIF for short, that is the group backing the Live Golf Tour. Now, um, the argument to that is that it is blood money, which I hate that the PGA Tour and the media even went there because that is the most absurd, ridiculous argument in the world. I'm going to read you guys a couple things. So it sounds great. It sounds like, you know, the right thing to say. It sounds ethical. But in actuality, the U.S. is an ally of Saudi Arabia. And we've had a longstanding relationship with them since back in the 1930s where we became allies. But listen to this, and this is on the state.gov website. You can look it up yourself. But the United States and Saudi Arabia, <laughs> our largest foreign military sales goes to Saudi Arabia. They are our number one customer for supporting and purchasing arms from us. 
to the tune of over $100 billion worth, all right? Also, we have a, a partnership with them where we you know, buy a lot of oil from them. In exchange, we provide educational services, economic support, and uh, we've had a long-standing partnership with that. So where does that argument stop about the whole blood money thing, right? This shirt's probably made in China. Did I not buy it because I'm, did I disagree with communism? No, that's stupid and that's absolutely ridiculous. That's not why people make decisions. And this whole blood money thing that Jay Monahan brought up on the PGA Tour is just a fear of an organization that, quite honestly, is taking a lot of their top talent. So capital, that's not going to be an issue. The player experience, that's number three. So number one, we have the team running this. Number two, we have capital. Number three, we have the player experience. So the, on the PGA Tour, the player experience, there's no guaranteed money. So let me give you a scenario. Someone works their entire life. They finally make it to the big leagues, the show, right? They go to their first event in January in Hawaii, they play the Sony Open, and flight, hotel room, caddy, food, and they miss the cut. Well, congratulations on making it to the big league. You're in the hole five grand week one. In every other professional sport, there is guaranteed money. This is a problem that Greg Norman's put out for a long time and what Live Golf addresses. There is guaranteed money and no cut in the events. So uh, the argument to this is people say, oh, well, you're ruining your legacy on the PGA Tour and you know, you're just going over there for the money. I have never seen more people get hated on for getting twice the money and working half the time. And whatever role you're in, if you got offered a job doing the exact same thing and got twice the income and only had to work half the time, or less, I hope you would take it. Uh, that, that is a no-brainer for anybody. And when they talk about legacy, and I understand, I'm a big fan of the, the tournaments on the PGA Tour from the Players' Championship to the Memorial. But at the same time, what if these players look at legacy a little bit different? What if their legacy is more than just golf? What if they don't want to watch their families grow up through pictures uh, and be gone, you know, 40 weeks out of the year traveling? where they're only playing eight events on the live tour and eventually may get to 14 plus the major championships. So I think the player experience is fantastic. Also, with a shotgun start, they don't have to worry about the idea of getting in the in the best wave or, or a bad wave, right? You could get in the afternoon wave or a morning wave where weather conditions are severely different and it literally creates two different tournaments. Um, so I think the player experience is going to be a lot better on the live tour and a better quality of life for them, which I think is great for their families. And then the last thing is the fan experience. All right. So let me give you this hypothetical scenario here. I'm going to say I'm the average American family. All right. Me and my wife, 2.2 kids, white picket fence, dog named Charlie. And I have a conversation with my wife on Friday. And let's say my son, his favorite golfer is Patrick Reed. And I tell her, Hey, I got tickets to the tour event tomorrow and because, you know, our son Colt wants to watch Patrick Reed and she's going to say, okay, great. What time will you be back? Because we have things we have to do around the house. We've got to cook out. We've got to cut the grass. We've got to clean the place, all of that. Well, honey, I don't know because I don't know, number one, is he even going to make the cut? Number two, how well he's going to do because that could determine if he tees off at eight o'clock or at 1.30 in the afternoon, which makes it an entire day commitment. That is not ideal for the ideal family lifestyle nowadays. I don't know anybody that's gotten less busy over the last five years. I think more people get more busy. So the idea of the fan experience is going to be fantastic. On top of that, what they're doing at Live, so get this, at the Shotgun Start, the event that's coming up in Oregon, they're having Navy SEAL parachute teams come down to launch the Shotgun Start. I think that's incredible. On top of that, too, their fan experience, they're doing um, free admission if you're under 15. They have a family bundle where the whole family can go for 90 bucks. And they're doing events at night from concerts to, um, I don't know what they're calling it, but they're having like a, a fan experience place where they have people that will actually give lessons and swing bays and putting greens, uh, face painting and stuff for kids. It's just a whole different avenue uh, from the fan experience plus the idea of a team aspect where you can root for a team and not individual. Now, I've heard the criticism there too around like their cheesy looking logos, who's gonna you know support that, I don't know what they're doing there. Well, like I mentioned, they have a team that knows what they're doing and their first event in London, all the team merchandise sold out 
before round one was even completed. So there is a lot of criticism around this. Uh, however, with what I've presented to you here and just the research I've done, again, if I'm wrong, call me out on it. I, I don't mind. I don't mind being wrong. I like being informed. Um, but just from the research I've done, I think this is here to stay, and I think it's going to be fantastic for the game of golf. Now, I know it can create a divide, but think about this from the major championship standpoint. So you have a lot of good players on the PGA Tour. You have a lot of good players on the Live Tour. People are pretty emotional about what side they're on. So then you take a major like the Masters, and let's say in the final group you have Roy McIlroy versus Brooks Kepka in the final group. How awesome would that be for the fans? How kind of rowdy would they be? Because they would be rooting for whichever tour they, they follow. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some insight as to what the Live Tour is all about, what they're trying to, to do. And remember, this is just a startup. It's going to grow. It's going to expand. The experience is going to get better. They don't even have a TV contract yet. But I can't imagine what's going to happen in the future. But again, challenge me. Point me out if I said something wrong. But again, I've got all the resources online where I found all of this. And uh, enjoy.